I'll tell you one thing, it's certainly gonna be cheaper. All right, let's do this. Let's answer the question, why? Why would you buy a mechanical group set in 2020? So a mechanical group set essentially just boils down to the fact that cables are pulling the movements of your gears. So you have a cable connected from your shifters to your derailers that when you click the actual shifter, it physically pulls, the action of you clicking it physically pulls the cable, which changes the gear. So truth is, guys, I've been thinking about doing this vlog for a long time. But the problem with dealing with this subject is yeah, there's an echo chamber of noise when it comes to it on YouTube. I'm pretty sure GCN have done 700 videos comparing electronic group sets to mechanical group sets. I thought we'd come at it from this angle. Obviously, as you guys know, we have been riding a mechanical group set this year, racing a mechanical group set this year, which for the majority, if not the entirety of the team, has seen the riders go from an electronic group set to a mechanical group set. For some of them, their first ever experience of a mechanical group set. So the way we approached this vlog is I put that question out to the guys in the team. Why would you buy a mechanical group set in 2020? And if you could do like a pie chart of the responses, it would be this big, massive, Jesse Coyle sized slice of pie that would say price, number one. And it is the truth. Guys, we, you just, the, the vlog could essentially be this. For example, if, if you were gonna go for an Altegra level group set, you're basically looking at spending $1,000 more for the electronic version. And the other important part here is the replaceable parts cost. So for example, if you were to destroy a SRAM Axis rear derailleur, it's a lot more expensive than a SRAM mechanical derailleur. And that boils down across through all the components, all the electronic components. All of them will be more expensive than their mechanical brothers, sisters, nephews, siblings. One of those ones. Maintenance. Is there any maintenance workshop reason that you would choose a mechanical group set over electronic? Well, when we first went down this route, one of the big things we were trying to avoid was that fatal flaw, that electronic fatal, fatal flaw that you could often get that would see you start come to a race and one of you guys hadn't charged the battery or the battery hadn't started working and their bike was defunct. A mechanical group set avoids that. It really does avoid that because you you essentially any problem that you have with your bike is fixable because it's all mechanically in front of you. So it could simply be just a replaced cable, a replaced part, all that kind of stuff. But, and this is the big but, the way I would describe it is this, that a mechanical group set is going to be more fiddly for you to maintain without the fatalities issues. So Perfect example, right? Say, say I go for a ride on a Saturday and then get up on the Sunday, start riding my bike on a Sunday and it's got like a tink, 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 tink. One of the gears has sort of come slightly out of alignment. Now that's because the cables just need to be readjusted, which you can do via indexing the gears. Pretty damn simple operation. You don't have to do that on an electronic group set. On an electronic group set, it is set it and forget it when it comes to those day-to-day -day things. You forget you even have gears, if you know what I mean, okay? So I think the answer to the question in the maintenance space, why would you buy a mechanical group set in 2020? To avoid the fatal flaw. To avoid being at Wiseman's Ferry, your electronic group set stop working, you have no idea why, you're looking at it, you're kicking it, to avoid that happening, then your mechanical group set is the answer. So let's cover performance, but I wanna cover it in slight, a couple of different subjects. So the first is I wanna talk just specifically about the style of shifting of mechanical group set because it is different. On an electronic group set, your shift is essentially a button press, okay? So there is no feel to it, it's just click, shift electronic like i don't know how else to, to say that a mechanical group set shift is a physical movement your movement is the movement that of your shift so here's the thing you can get it right and you can get it wrong 
By that, I mean the style of shift that you do on a mechanical group set affects the way the derailleur shifts. Once you get your head around the style of shift that you like, then you have almost complete customization about the way your bike shifts. The flip side of that is when you're not thinking about that, or if you never want to think about that, it's not something you're ever gonna get right and it will affect the performance of your shifting. To answer the question, why would you buy a mechanical group set in 2020 for a shifting performance advantage, it comes down to the style of rider that you are. If you are someone who is more engaged with the style of shifting that you want to complete, then yeah, there is some benefit to it. But if a bike shift is just a bike shift and you're concentrating on getting down the road or to the guy in front or getting away from the girl behind, it doesn't really matter. Okay, what about performance for pure performance sake? How does this play out on the road when the rubber meets the road? Perfect example of this, okay, is one of the crit crosses we've been doing out here at the moment is Lansdowne. Now Lansdowne has a really fast sweeping section. You come down pedaling through these great corners, 53.11, trying to get away from the bunch, whacking it down there, okay? So you come around a left hand and then you gradually start climbing back up the other side. So you're gonna start coming back up the block. With a mechanical group set, you are almost preparing the shift. You're, you're thinking about, okay, as I come around this, I'll start to just engage that first shift and then as I continue to pedal, or do I need to accelerate further to follow that wheel? Do I need to increase the cadence a bit more to, to attack at this point? And all the time, your, your finger is sort of on the, the shifter thinking about this, and you have control over it. You do have control over it, but you're thinking about it. When you get that shift right on a mechanical group set, it works perfectly, it works better than electronic. But when you don't get it right, when you just mash it, you pay the consequences with a mashed pedal. That for me explains the whole difference in the performance space of whether a mechanical group set is for you in 2020. Other things to consider in this space, a mechanical group set will often be heavier than its electronic rival. Look, as we go more integrated, we're seeing it at the front end of bikes, we're seeing it at the back end of bikes, integration aero is definitely just dominating at the moment. With a mechanical group set, your cable still have to go somewhere. That cable that runs from your shifter to your front and rear derailleur nowadays is probably going to have to run through your frame somewhere. Is there a space for a mechanical group set in 2020? Well, yeah, but I think it's definitely leaning more towards the traditional geometry styled bike. That's going to be much easier than the full integrated front end, where the hell's my cable situation. But let's be honest, you want the real YouTube question, don't you? Which is the best mechanical group set? Blah, 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 shoot out, shoot out. Sorry, can't do it because I haven't actually ridden all of them. But what I will say is this, not all mechanical group sets are created equal, just like not all electronic group sets are created equal. And you don't really have to do much research to find out why. Like. Okay, specifically, if you look at Campy, for example, they've gone ahead and released their 12 speed group sets and they've done them in the mechanical line because they still spend a lot of time and a lot of research and a lot of development in the mechanical space. They use the product enhancements for all their group sets. Like if you look at the mechanical 12 speed derailers, they share a lot in common with the derailers on the super record EPS 12 speed derailers. Now you don't have to look very hard at a company like SRAM, they're not spending the same amount of time on their mechanical stuff. I saw a stat from one of the guys that worked at SRAM that basically said, as far as their R&D goes, around 80% of that is going towards the electronic wireless space. That is their future. They're not going back to cables. So with that in mind, obviously the product enhancements that you see in the mechanical space and the performance are going to be different across the different categories and the different brands. So here's a really, really interesting one when you start breaking the prices down. So I'm just on bike bug here at the moment. And if I go ahead and look at a Shimano Altegra, Altegra is a second tier DI2 electronic group set, 
we're looking at around two and a half thousand dollars. Okay, if I scroll down a bit and I go for Durace, top of the line, Durace, top of the line, mechanical group set, it's about the same, 2,400. So in that space, in that space, why would you buy a mechanical, a mechanical group set in 2020 in the Shimano world? Well, you wouldn't. You really wouldn't because you're only just dropping down one tier and you're getting the benefits of electronic. In the Campy world, Campy Record 12 speed, about 2,300 here on, on Bike Bug. Now, why would you buy a mechanical group set in 2020 when you wanted a Campy group set? Because, well, basically that's your only option at a 12 speed level. Otherwise, you've got to boost up to, to Super Record or go down to 11 speed. In the SRAM world, whilst the options for a SRAM Force mechanical group set might be there at about $1,500, we know that they're just not going to be following through the product development in that space. If, if you walk into a bike shop, right, and the salesperson starts talking to you about this bike next to them with disc brakes and electronic group sets and sells you the dream that it's the best thing ever, well, they're not lying to you, but they're not also giving you the full story. The full story might be that for you, there's better value. You might be looking at $1,500 cheaper for a mechanical group set. That might not be a big deal for you. There are gonna be slight performance disadvantages to you. You're gonna slightly have to do a little bit more maintenance, slightly more repetitively, but there are gonna be benefits. There's not gonna be fatal flaws. There's not gonna be a few things like that happen. Please have that discussion with the person who's selling you the bike before they sell you the dream. Thanks to the guys in the team for giving me a lot of this information because a lot of this stuff that I'm telling you is the info that they were giving me. I didn't bring up Dylan's um, stabbing incident with his cable. That's a whole other story. I'll let Dylan tell you that story. We can put that as the major cons of mechanical group sets, how not to stab yourself with your cables. Anyway, guys, uh, all the videos popping up around me at the moment, and we will see you. <laughs> I've got no idea what I'm saying. I need a coffee. All right, talk to you soon, guys. Maintenance. Is there any maintenance reason that you would get a truck to drive past the vlog? First ever experience of a mechanical group set. Cue the vlog making wind blower noise. Back up. So at that point, you have a helicopter come past you, and we have to wait for that.